Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Asa. In this uh, short article that appeared in phys.org, I want to discuss what we see right here. The Arctic sea ice succumbs to Atlantification. Now, we've seen a spate of discussion articles and videos and so on saying how the Arctic Ocean is getting Atlantified. Well, I've been warning about this for over a year. In fact, I did a video about a little over a year ago talking about how the Barents Sea, which is basically down around here, was uh, this area here, right, was uh, being Atlantified that the Barents Sea was starting to take on characteristics typical of North Atlantic waters. In other words, we're seeing an increase in the salinity, a uh, increase in the temperature. So as the Arctic Ocean loses its uh, annual sea ice, you, don't, you no longer have that diluting effect when the sea ice melts. Which, which would typically keep the surface salinities at a lower level. So we lose the sea ice there. We're starting to see a, a slight increase in surface salinity measures in the Arctic Ocean. And not to mention that having open waters, heat energy is going to be absorbed in uh, giving us warmer uh, sea surface temperatures as well. So what do we got going on here? Okay, so this is uh, basically a lot of the work here comes from the Alfred Wegener Institute, and they're showing here sea ice thickness in meters. So the bluer it is, the closer it is to being open uh, water, like this is open water. This is very uh, young ice. It's probably newly freezing. It could be what's called... Uh, uh, slush ice, greasy ice, what have you. And the whiter it is, the thicker is the ice. And of course, the more you have thicker areas, that increases your, your volume of sea ice. Well, what are we seeing here? It's pretty much most of the ice that's on the thicker side is in the, is in the Canadian archipelago off, in the, off the northern coast of Greenland. We are seeing, I mean, look at this. We've got close to open waters here in the, in the Laptev. Barents, Kara, Laptev, East Siberian Sea. I mean, we see the ice is thinning. Now, this graphic here is showing the uh, anomalies, those uh, anomalies in the thickness. So the darker it is, this is minus 1.5. And on the blue is positive 1.5. That means this has been lost. You see how dark it is here? This has lost 1.5 meters thick. In other words, what we're seeing here now is 1.5 meters less than what is anticipated, what is expected. Same thing here. Over here, it's about average, maybe a little accretion, but about average. But look, but look around here. Most of it was seeing the anomalies indicating a loss of ice. So this is just showing you the thickness, and this is showing you how the thickness is basically decreasing. If there were no anomalies, we would see much whiter shading on the left panel. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, Okay, we got the I see ice is rapidly dwindling. Satellite data have revealed how the intrusion of warmer Atlantic waters is reducing ice regrowth in the winter. In addition, with seasonal ice more unpredictable than ever, ESA, SMOS, and Cryosat satellites are being used to improve the sea ice forecast. Notice that now they're basically take in additional data for more analyses, and then you can then ascertain, make projections as to what will be the situation. 
But this is what bothers me. Sea ice forecast, critical for shipping, fisheries, and indigenous communities. Shipping, so now we're talking about shipping across the, the blue ocean of Antarctic. Now fisheries, yes, you know. But remember, with the loss of sea ice, you're going to lose productivity from two important sources. Ice edge productivity, as the ice melts, forms a little stratification, but also the underside of the ice from ice algae. So this will have a negative impact on fisheries because you're losing two sources of primary productivity. The phytoplankton and the open waters, like the diatoms and so on, they need the sun to get at a much higher level before they can start doing their thing. Indigenous communities, of course, that's obviously an important consideration because many of the uh, uh, folks living subsistence lifestyle depend on the sea ice to be there so that they can hunt the seals primarily, just like polar bears, by the way. So if, they, if there's no ice, they're not going to be able to uh, go and hunt seals. Be and the seals would be uh, endangered because the seals need a place to pull out and rest, but as well as you know a place for their pups. So that's also uh, presents some problems for them. The amount of sea ice floating in the Arctic Ocean varies enormously as it grows and shrinks with the seasons, of course. Although some of the old, older, thicker ice remains throughout, there is an undeniable trend of declining ice as climate change basically takes stronger hold. Arctic sea ice reaches a maximum around March. You've heard me describe this to you before due to the specific heat uh, of water uh, and you know the, the lag of effect. March is the oceanographic winter in the Northern Hemisphere. And likewise, September is the oceanic summer in Northern Hemisphere, and that's when we expect to see sea ice at a minimum. So maximum around March shrinks to a minimum around September after the summer melt. These seasonal swings are not only linked to the changing seasons, it transpires that along with our warming climate, the temperature of the adjacent, adjacent ocean seawater is now also adding to the ice vulnerability. Previous research suggested that sea ice can partly recover in the winter following a strong summer melt because thin ice grows faster than thick ice. <clears throat> However, <coughs> excuse me, however, new findings indicate that heat from the ocean is overpowering the stabilizing effect, reducing the volume of sea ice that can regrow in the winter. That means sea ice is more vulnerable during warmer summers and winter storms, and we're basically kicking in positive feedback loops. Okay. In my ocean heat content video, I shared with you how the oceans have absorbed 93% of all greenhouse gas emissions since 1971, and they have absorbed that to the tune of 200 zettajoules of energy. And we know that uh, water flows into the Arctic from the Pacific and Atlantic side. If the waters are warmer, it's bringing in that warmth. That warmth is going to diffuse, and it diffuses upward. And melts the ice, as well as eventually, uh, you know, just diffusing up into the atmosphere. So, so that's basically what they're getting at there: is that the, the oceans are warmer from that come in from this uh, more southerly uh, latitudes. They they bring the water into the Arctic Ocean. It's warmer. That warmth diffuses, melts the ice from below. We see something similar in Antarctica, right? You have the heating from above, but you have the warming. Uh, surface waters that melts the shelf ice from underneath, warming from above, melting from below, then you have ice shelves breaking off. Robert Ricker from the AWI Hem, Hem, Helmholtz Center for Polar Marine Research in Germany and colleagues mapped regional changes in sea ice volume owing to drift, calculate how much ice grows because of freezing each month, they also use model simulations to, to find out why. So Dr. Ricker said that over the last decades, we observed the tendency 
that the less ice you have at the beginning of the freezing season, the more it grows in the winter season. However, what we found now is that in a barren sea, the Kara Sea regions, this stabilizing effect is being overpowered by ocean heat and warmer temperatures that are reducing the ice growth in winter. This new process is called Atlantification, meaning that the heat from the Atlantic Ocean carried the higher latitudes is causing the edge of the sea ice to retreat, not to mention the thickness of the ice to decline. So I'm going to play this little animation for you. There's no sound to it, just a little animation uh, showing Arctic sea ice volume, basically this 10-year period. So here we go. Let me see, I go uh, full screen. Okay, the whiter it is, the thicker is the ice. So it's tracking seasonally. Now into 2012. Northern Hemisphere sea ice thickness and volume from Cryosat uh, and SMOS, Alpha Vegna Institute, Helmholtz Center. Okay, so uh, play this again for you. And you can see that when it gets really, low, let me pause it right here, for example. Okay, this is probably in September when the ice will be at its minimum. But even so, we can see, here's the East Siberian Sea and the Kara Sea, uh, excuse me, Laptev. Laptev, East Siberian, Kara, Barents. Barents is open. The, uh, the Kara, the Laptev, and the East Siberian Seas are very thin, right? We're talking about maybe a meter or so, maybe. Where's the ice thickest? Off Greenland. Canadian Archipelago, we can see that right here. Okay, so let's uh, continue along. Okay, now you can see the how it's proceeding into winter time. You got some more of the thicker ice, like this, right? See how it got a thicker, a little extension, but still, not much going on on the Eurasian side. Now, this is uh, most likely in March when it, it's oceanic winter, and you can see that the ice is thickest and has the furthest extent. But still, look at the Eurasian side, and now even start looking over here towards the Beaufort and Chukchi Seas, right? Here's, here's Alaska, the Mackenzie River Delta is right there, right? Not much happening there, so it's, uh, it's you know, maybe about two meters or so, two and a half, obviously thicker here. Not much going on there. And the thicker the ice is, that's usually older ice as well. So we're losing the older ice in addition. Again, we just see what's happening. Most like the winter time. So um, the, the animation shows the, you know, the, gr the growth and the shrinking, 
But if you look at that carefully, you can see how the, the thickness is declining just in this past decade and the extent. Yes, it'd be some years it might extend a little more. You know, there's always going to be a little variation. When you look at the overall picture, we see the thickness is declining, the extent is declining. It's leading to thinner ice, which will lead to more open water. The researchers believe that the stabilizing mechanism in other regions of the Arctic could also be overpowered in the future. What they were referring to there is on the North American side. As we saw in that little animation there, basically the Canadian archipelago and off Greenland. So why is that um, the case that the Eurasian side seems to be getting hit hard? It's, it's due to the, uh, the flow patterns. Well, the surface currents, you know, you have the uh, Arctic boundary current, you have the Beaufort gyre, which has a tendency of pushing surface and even intermediate waters off, off towards the shoreline on the North American side, but also along with Ekman pumping, will push it uh, towards the Eurasian side with the shallow shelves bringing in the heat and mixing in the Atlantic um, characteristics, and for that matter, some of the Pacific characteristics as well. So the ice thickness data from the uh, Cryosat mission was uh, significant in uh, contributing to the Atlantification findings. But of course, like everything else, you don't just rely on one source of data. So we have uh, Stefan Hendricks and AWI said the driver is low volume of sea ice is the region north of Greenland and the Canadian archipelago where the thickest ice usually re re resides. Last winter, thick sea ice was almost absent. The rest of the Arctic sea ice is a mix of above and below average. And of course, they can use that to you know, improve weather forecasts and what's happening long term, i.e. climate. So, so in, what the essence of this is, is that we have the introduction of warm, salty North Atlantic water that is, from, thanks to the heat diffusing from below, is melting the ice. The ice cannot recover as you as it did historically, which is a contributing factor to the rapid decline of sea ice, the rapid decline in extent of the sea ice, the rapid decline in multi-year, and hence ice volume, all declining. Now, when I worked in sea ice, I was over in this region. Chukchi Sea, Chukchi Sea, over into the Beaufort. That's where I was. I was doing, I was part of the work doing heat budgets. So, as I, I've been talking about this, you know, I did that uh, video about the Barents Sea becoming Atlantified, uh, basically right here. So, um, this is something that's been going on for a while. Just now we're starting to get better quantified uh, data. And we're now drastically seeing the effects. And here you have it. Atlantification of the Arctic Ocean, which will be a major contributor, one factor that will bring us a BOE, a blue ocean event. Stay tuned. Thank you for your time. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.